With MCC Rising 2 just around the corner, I wanted to give all new applicants some insight from an MCC Rising 1 player. In this video, I'm going to give you guys some tips on what you should be doing while you apply, how you should go about the event, and some of my personal experiences through MCC. Although not a canon event, joining MCCR gives you a chance to put your own name into a footnote in the MCC history. It is a content creation experience unlike any other, and only a select few lucky content creators will ever get in. So without any further ado, here are my tips and tricks on how to join MCC Rising. Part 1. Finding a team. The very first step in creating a rising team is knowing exactly what you personally want out of the event. Are you in it to win? Do you just want to have the experience? Or do you want to further your content creation career? No matter what it is you want to do, you're going to want to be on a team of like-minded individuals or at least friends who are okay with how you want to go about playing the event. Building your team is crucial to rising. Your team is your identity, and you must wear your hearts on your sleeve to even be considered to join the event. So ask yourself this, who do you see yourself on a team with? It doesn't have to be a full team. Just think of one other person that you have a close connection with and reach out to them. See if they already have a team or not. And if they do, think of someone else. If not, consider asking them to join your team. From there, work together to brainstorm who else you would work well with. Soon enough, you're gonna be a team of two, and then a team of three, and then a full team of four. In my experience, during MCC Rising 1, I had no interest in making a team and applying towards the event, because to me, there was no way that I was gonna get in. It wasn't until my friend Mako Inari asked if I had a team and convinced me to apply with him. Had I actually known that we stood a chance, I think I would have gone about making our team differently. So if you do apply, make sure that you apply with people who you actually see yourself having a good time with under the assumption that you're actually going to be chosen to participate in the event. This is a bit more personal advice, but take into consideration how MCC Rising is going to affect your friendships in the long term. The friends that you apply with might not even be your friends a year after the event. MCC Rising is a huge opportunity to both make experiences with your friends as well as furthering your content creation career. Leaning too far into one side over the other can be detrimental to your friendships or to your career. You're going to be just as anxious as you are excited, but so is everyone else. So remember, you're not in it alone. You have your friends' backs. They have yours. Go make the most out of it. Part 2. Applications Now that you have your team together, it's time to make the application video. Even if you don't think you have a shot, I suggest you try. Half of the experience of Rising is working with your team on a video that represents who you are, what your content is, and what you're all about. It's a time to get creative, have fun, and put your full efforts into making the best application you can. I recommend you set up a document and plot out all the key points that you want to talk about in your application. Have your teammates read it over and have them tell you honestly what is and isn't necessary. Keep it short and sweet. You don't need to include your entire life story in your application. A few things that I would recommend including is your name, your identity, and maybe one to two facts about you and your content creation journey. Crack a few jokes with your teammates to show off that good team energy. Aim for a cohesive visual plot instead of just a bunch of random clips scattered throughout the video. Something that I saw a lot of people doing last time is explaining your role on the team, but in my opinion, it's better to show off your role in practice. It's incredibly fun to brainstorm an original idea to base your application on, but the keyword there being original. You might have an idea right away on what you want to do, but trust me, others are going to have the exact same one. Take your time to come up with something you really want to do. You only have one shot at this. In MCC Rising 1 applications, the application that got us into the event was a fast-paced edited intro to us as creators set to the theme of Sailor Moon with a transformation sequence. It was both good at introducing who we were, what we were about, our dynamic, and it kept it visually appealing. Unfortunately, I can't show you the full application because it has been completely wiped from the internet, but just know it was a banger. Just like creating any sort of edited content, speeches or jokes that drag on way too long are going to make people, aka the Nox crew members, completely lose interest. So make sure that you cut out all the fluff, only include what makes you and your team stand out, and if needed, pay an editor. The experience is completely worth the cost. At the end of the day, what you choose to put into your application is completely up to you and your team. So don't follow this advice too strictly. Make sure that you're having fun with it, and it'll make it all worth it. Part 3. Training. This, in my opinion, is arguably the most exciting part of MCCR. Now that you've been accepted, it's time to train for the main show, MC Championship. This is a time where you're past the initial anxiety that comes with waiting to be announced, but before the train wreck that will be MCCR. Take this time to really focus on creating content around training with your team, meeting the other participants, and spreading a good image of yourself. Some teams will receive training from MCC members and some won't. It does not determine your team's value in the event. You and your friends made it further than most other teams that applied, so you deserve it. 
don't feel like you're any less because you're not getting trained by the big guys. I personally did feel like our team was a little bit less than the others just because we weren't getting trained and others were. It felt terrible that some of the teams had direct communication with Canon MCC members, and they were getting a competitive advantage that just was somewhat unfair. But look, in hindsight, it didn't matter. The community was the best resource with coming up with strategies, and truthfully, the MCC community is one of the most dedicated group of nerds that will ever be around. Most of the community knows more than the actual MCC players in terms of strategy, statistics, and anything that could get you an advantage. So listen to the community, look at the subreddit, look at Twitter, and interact with them on your streams as much as possible. During training, you're going to want to get to know your opposing teams. Not only is it good for networking, but you're also going to want to see how they play and what kind of Minecraft player they are. To be completely honest with you, some people are going to be clicky. And that's just how life is, and that's just how content creators are. During MCCR1, there were definitely groups of players who stuck to themselves, but it was never in bad faith. Look, at the end of the day, Minecraft creators can be quite antisocial, so just try not to take it too personally. I don't really have any training specifics, but I do recommend watching as many VODs as you can, practicing as many games as you can without sticking to one specific game too much, and like I said, just interact with the community. You are going to need some sort of strategy going to the game, especially if you are not an avid MCC watcher. Some of your opponents are going to be mega fans, and they're going to know a lot more about the event than you are. Games such as Sands of Time have specific roles that you need to meet, such as the Sand Keeper, or in Build Mart, the Floater. Understand what these terms mean and what they do. Decide who on your team is going to fill these roles, and make sure that they understand their job. Check in with your team every so often to make sure that their training is going okay, and offer to teach them if they're not fully getting it. MCC has a variety of different games that aren't just PvP or movement or parkour specific, so don't think that just because you look like the greatest PvPer that you're just going to dominate everything. And most importantly, do not underestimate your opponents. Alright, now you've made it to the event. Part 4, The Event. Congratulations, you have made it past training and it is now time to compete for the crown. Give yourself and your team a round of applause because it is your time to shine. Make sure that you get a good night of sleep the night before. I know that sounds really simple, but anxiety is a bitch and is going to overwhelm you if you're not ready. You will forget to do the most basic of things. Before MCC Rising 1, I got roughly one hour of sleep. And to be honest, I think that it had a significant impact on how I performed as well as how I communicated with my team. One of those things that it's really simple, but it's really easy to forget. A few other things that I recommend that you don't forget, make sure that you eat a healthy breakfast, but don't overeat. You don't want to feel sick during the event. Make sure that you have bottles of water on the ready. Use the bathroom before the event, even if you feel like you don't have to. Take a nice long shower, brush your teeth, shave, and wash your hands. Do whatever you need to do to feel like a star. Close out of everything in the background of your computer that might be slowing your computer down. Now this is optional, but I suggest you don't listen to your own background music. I do recommend that you just listen to the MCC music. Get into a call with your team before and have a pep talk. Remind your family, friends, and roommates not to interrupt you during the event, because that would just suck. And I cannot stress this enough, make sure that you are doing a mic check before stream. During MCCR1, I forgot to do this and it made my microphone sound like this. Look, I'm the llama. Hee <laughs> hee. That's a, a bit different from what I actually sound like. The more pressure that you put onto specific games, the more that you're going to be in your head while you're playing it. In my opinion, Sands of Time gets such a rep for being such a stressful and hard game, and yet truthfully, it was one of the easiest and least stressful games that I played. If you are inexperienced enough of a Minecraft player, it is literally just basic PvE skills. Break games down to their core for what they are so that you don't get too stressed over them. Another example is Parkour Tag. The more that you worry about being tagged, the more likely that you are to choke a jump and get tagged anyways. So please, don't stress, drink some tea, count to 10, and hell, meditate if you need to. Part 5. Post-event. Now that MCCR is over, you're going to feel on top of the world. But I feel like I should remind you this. MCC Rising is not the peak of your content creation career. Yes, it is massive, and it's very impressive and an achievement for sure, but it does not define you. For better or for worse, your MCC experience does not define you as a person. By the end of MCC, you are going to discover something about yourself that you did not previously know. It is very stressful, there's a lot of anxiety involved, and you're going to act in ways that you normally don't. 
In my case, my performance anxiety got to me really badly and I ended up treating my teammates in a terrible manner. And to be completely honest, during the event and even for months afterwards, I didn't really see it. It wasn't until I let my ego down that I really started to see how what I said affected them and how the way that I acted was completely unfair to them and the viewers and the community. And I know that I've already apologized, but I would like to do it one more time. I am sorry to everyone who I have said during MCC. To most people, you're going to have an amazing time and you're going to build amazing new friendships and experiences that you otherwise would not have had if not for the help of the Nox crew. So make sure that not only are you congratulating your fellow competitors, but you're also thanking the Nox crew for all of the hard work that they put into everything that they do. The next step after the event should be getting right back into your normal content creation schedule. Now that you have all of these new eyes on you, you're going to want to keep them as regular viewers. So let's say, for example, you stream hardcore. You're going to want to get right back into that so that any MCC viewer who also likes hardcore is going to stick around and enjoy your community. And look, I know that MCC isn't all about the growth, but it is something that you're going to want to capitalize on. Most MCC viewers don't even stay for long, so don't get discouraged if you slowly go from 10xing your average viewer count during the event to going right back to your normal viewers even just weeks after. And most importantly, please remember this. MCC is so much more than just a competition. It is an experience unlike any other. I hope that everyone who gets to experience it the best of luck to make the most out of it, make some amazing memories, and have fun. I could go on and on about how amazing MCC is and the opportunities that it's given me as a creator, and maybe I'll do that in the future, but I hope that these tips have helped you. If you have any advice for the new risers, please do consider dropping them down in the comments below. There are so many other things that I could say, but I don't want this video to drag on too long. If you've made it this far into the video, consider dropping a like and a sub. And if you're feeling extra kind, come hang out in one of my Twitch streams. All of my links are down in the description below. If anybody has any specific questions, my DMs on Twitter are always open. That's at LackeyLOL. And I'll see you guys on the island. Peace out.